Some people think Resident Evil has bad controls, but I think, well, I think they're right. They're horrible for certain types of games, right? You know, if this was Devil May Cry, we don't want to take controls in there. Oh, oh no, mm -mm. DMC is supposed to be about styling on baddies and showing off your sick moves, which would be kind of hard to do if your shoes were stuck in molasses. So tank controls would just be the worst here. But in a scary game, especially a slow paced one, having your shoes stuck in molasses would only add to the creep factor. I mean, think about it, what sounds worse? Running away from a zombie? Or trying to run away from a zombie, but you're having some technical difficulties at the moment, so if you could just hold on for a second, zombie, I need to turn around. These controls were meant for games like Resident Evil. They just had this little bit of extra texture to everything. It's kind of pointy and sharp, and people hurt themselves on it sometimes, but it's why Resident Evil controls like a nightmare. Okay, real quick. In Resident Evil 3 and the remake of number one, you can do a quick turnaround, which really cuts away a lot of the awkwardness. So they aren't quite as scary as the first two games, which were the main ones I was thinking about when I made this. And also, just in case you don't know how tank controls control, it's really simple, actually. When you push up on the D-pad, your character always moves forwards, down makes them always go backwards, left and right has them stand in place, rotating to the left or to the right, and when you go forwards or backwards, you can turn a little bit at the same time. It's like driving a car. You turn the steering wheel to move left or right, hit the gas to go forwards, and shift into reverse when the lizard people show up. And that's it. That's how these controls work. They operate under the principle of clunk. Because these controls aren't just clunky. They are clunk. They're stiff and slow and disempowering and barbaric and not the nicest feeling. That's what makes them scary. How they really make me feel like I'm controlling a forklift. A forklift with a human face. Who are you? What are you doing here? Hold your fire! I'm a human! Shoot! I'm being dead serious for a second here. Get it? Tank controls aren't that bad. Sure, they're dated to the late 1990s. And uh, they, well, they definitely don't have what I'd call fluid movement, but I love them. Yeah, they can be awkward, and that can make a scary game a little bit more scary. But tank controls themselves, they aren't scary. They're, they're just another way to move a character. In the right setting, they can do the opposite of Resident Evil and bring out calm, beautiful moments that other controls would struggle with. Resident Evil just so happens to lean on the clunky aspect. The stiffness, the deliberate movement, how it slows you from instantly reacting to danger. I doubt it was intentional, but... It gives everything a dose of raw, spooky energy. Because, I mean, you can't just walk over to that door right there. You know, it should be simple, but actually what you've got to do first is slowly rotate until Chris is facing the door. Uh, a, a little to the right. More. More good. Then you can start moving forwards. And okay, all right, whatever. Doesn't seem like that's too big of a deal. But the thing is, all this spinning around it adds an extra second or two, where an extra second or two could mean the difference between avoiding a zombie or falling into its loving arms. It's always something you have to worry about. If this was a different game with modern controls, like the Resident Evil 2 remake, the demo, I, um, uh, I haven't gotten around to buying it yet. It's, uh, it's pretty scary. But yeah, in this game, if you're right next to a zombie, it's not so bad. All you gotta do is move the analog stick down, shoot the zombie up real good, and there we go. Safe and away from the zombie menace. So, games with normal controls, they don't have that, that underlying sense of tension. They can have it. I mean, they can have tension in all sorts of other ways that's a hundred times scarier than all the old Resident Evils put together but they can't have the same type of fear that the old games have. Modern controls just aren't restrictive enough, you know? 
You can jump all over the place and fly and you have the grappling hooks and you can shoot guns and aim your guns and reload your guns and do everything all at the same time. It's nuts. You know, zombies just don't feel the same when you can do all that stuff. Because actually, they feel a billion times more scary. The way they lurch side to side and move in sort of brain-dead ways. Ugh. And if that was bad enough, what you've got to do is not panic. you got to keep your hands from trembling so you can get a clean shot. God damn it. Or else. The older games, they don't do anything like this. The most you had to aim was point your gun within a 10 foot radius of the monster and auto lock on took care of the rest. If we're just going for what's scarier, it's the remake, don't even need to think about it. Trying to keep a steady aim with wobbly zombies heading your way is terrifying. But still, there is something special about how the originals went for that slow, burning fear. Where each step you take is a reminder of how vulnerable you are. Even if you're a legend like me who's mastered these controls, the way they lock you down and restrain you from doing anything too fancy, it can make stuff like walking feel like a commitment. Yep, walking, just walking around. One of the most non-committal activities ever. Uh, feels like something I should be careful about. Because you can't just change your mind whenever you feel like it. You can't instantly go left or turn around and run when you see some devil dogs. You have to stand there for several more seconds than you'd like and watch. If we had modern controls, you know how to go down. But with tank controls, this situation isn't about your reflexes. It's about your impending doom. And yeah, this might seem kinda dumb. Honestly, it's not even that hard to get out of situations like this, but it's tense. Like at any moment when you're walking down one of these hallways, some hideous who knows what could crawl out of a corner, catch you off guard and get you. And they really can catch you off guard because, and this is very horrifying, you can only see these rooms in little bits and pieces at a time. You never get to see all of it at once. Only one stylish angle after an equally stylish angle. Ooh, fancy. I can't tell you how many of my nerves have been racked just from the way the camera is framed. Some of these shots are so, I don't even want to move. Or, or the times you realize you're being watched from behind a window. I mean, there could be anything. Anything could be on the other side of this table. It could be a zombie, or it could be a delicious cookie. But there's only one way to find out. Cookies! That's not how games are supposed to do things. Having the camera get in the way is a big no-no. It's pretty much the big no-no. Good cameras are supposed to always be there for you, never leaving your side. They make sure you have a nice view of what's happening. Not this. This is not helping. I mean, a lot of the times, the camera goes out of its way to be difficult. It'll happily stare at a dead end when it knows there's a bunch of zombies who have you cornered. It'll show you a super suspicious doorway at an angle that doesn't let you see what's inside. And all we can do is slowly rotate to the correct longitude and go where our fears are. Controls like a nightmare. And that's the end. Really snuck up on you, huh?